Good evening. Welcome to Trinity Presbyterian Church for this special witness to the crucifixion and to Good Friday. If you're here, welcome. If you're at home, welcome. If you join us later through a recording, welcome as well. Would you please join me in reading responsively um, the opening words and litany? Christ Jesus bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you are always faithful, even when we betray you. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus Christ, you claim us as your own, even when we deny you. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus Christ, you clothe us in your righteousness, even when we give you a crown of thorns. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus Christ, you bless us with your word, even when we mock and curse you. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus Christ, you reach out to us in love, even when we reject and despise you. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus Christ, you pour out your grace for us, even when we give you sour wine. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus Christ, you give us your life to save us, even though we crucify you. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Holy God, when Jesus cried and breathed his last, you tore away the ancient curtain between heaven and earth, life and death. As we turn to face the cross, show us, Jesus, in his suffering and glory, that we may believe and have eternal life. Through Christ your Son, our Savior. Amen. Oh, 
Holy One, our strength in suffering and our hope for salvation, lift up your word of life and pour out your spirit of grace so that we may follow faithfully all the way to the cross through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading this evening comes from books 52 and 53 of Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall, be, he shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see. And that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like sheep that before its shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth.
Hear now God's word to us from the Gospel of John. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. Pilate said to the religious leaders, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus in between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the religious leaders read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said... I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom, So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And this is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to the woman, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the religious leaders did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you may also believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, They will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the other religious leaders, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed the body. Nicodemus, who had first come to Jesus at night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices and linen cloths according to the burial customs of the Jews. 
Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified. And in the garden, there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Come and see. Those are the first words that Jesus speaks in this gospel to those who will become his disciples. It's an invitation to community. The first of his signs takes place at a community celebration, a wedding, and his mother is the one there to help midwife his public ministry. She's the first true believer, but she's mentioned just twice at the wedding and here at the end of his life at the foot of the cross. The group gathered at the cross, keeping watch through Jesus' last excruciating hours, had become family already. But Jesus makes it explicit. Here is your son. Here is your mother. Here is the family, united in love and in grief. And then there were two more. Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, Jesus' nighttime visitor from earlier days. Both men with means, both men with some power and influence, both secret in their discipleship. And both made bold in Jesus' death to come before Pilate and ask for the body, to bring a ridiculously extravagant amount of precious spices to anoint Jesus' body and dress it in linen cloths and bring it to rest in a garden tomb. Just before the holiest of days, a Passover that fell on the Sabbath, these two Jewish leaders became ritually unclean for the sake of adoration. They too were disciples. Even in his death, Jesus built community. He brought together those who loved him at a time when everything else would have separated them. Good Friday was not a solitary experience. Even in the bleak reality of death, the presence of this small community of people who loved Jesus became an act of resistance and a sign of hope. That hope didn't change Jesus' fate on the cross, and it wasn't a balm for the sadness, the devastation of his death. But it was embodied resistance to death and despair. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ, not even death itself. That love remained, gathered at the foot of the cross, preparing Jesus' body for burial, because the love of God never died. It's often said that we live in a Good Friday world, but Sunday is on the way. Whatever is going on in our lives or in the world, it all feels like Good Friday full of death and despair, bleak. And we know that the story continues, and we are here to tell it because of this community that Jesus built, because of the love of God that is shared even in and especially in those longest nights. And so here we are tonight, gathered together at the cross, and we are not alone. I invite you now to place a hand on your heart and to take a minute to look around into the eyes of those who are gathered here or wherever you are at home to know that you are not alone.
we are not alone. We are bound together by the love of God in Jesus Christ. And these are your people, because this is our God. May we continue through this long Good Friday, bearing God's love into the world. Amen. As we pray together, during these prayers of intercession, there will be an opportunity for silence after each bidding. And in that time of silence, I invite you to pray in your heart as God leads you. Beloved people of God, as Jesus stretched out his arms on the cross to offer life and salvation to all, let us pray for the world that God loves so much let us pray for the church throughout the world.
Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ. By your Holy Spirit, guide the church and gather it throughout the world. Help it to persevere in faith, proclaim your name, and bring the good news of salvation in Christ to all people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for people of other faiths. Almighty and eternal God, gather into your embrace all those who call out to you under different names. Bring an end to interreligious strife and make us more faithful in our witness to the love made known to us in your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for those who cannot believe. Almighty and eternal God, you created humanity so that all might long to know you and find peace in you. Grant that all may recognize signs of your love and grace in the world and in the lives of Christians and gladly acknowledge you as the one true God. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for God's creation. Almighty and eternal God, you are the creator of a magnificent universe. Hold this world in your arms of care. Heal the damage we have done and bring all things to fulfillment in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for the leaders and people of all nations. Almighty and eternal God, you are the champion of the poor and the oppressed. In your goodness, give wisdom to those in authority so that people everywhere may enjoy justice, peace, freedom, and a share in the goodness of your creation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for all who suffer or are in need. Almighty and eternal God, you give us strength to the weary. 
and new courage to those who have lost heart. Here are the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble, that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Sometimes. 